Episode number 74, the SBA 504. What every CEO should know about this low program. You know, if you've ever considered owning your own commercial facility rather than renting, today's show is for you. So listen carefully. I don't want to steal the thunder of my expert guest, so I will just give you a brief overview of the various portions of the program. My guest, Jeff Zarenka, will fill in the blanks. The SBA 504 is a certain type of commercial mortgage that will allow you to buy a building with only 10% down of your own money, and then you borrow 40% from the SBA at a fixed rate, and you get to borrow 50% if approved by the bank, so a total of 90% financing. The good thing about it is that the SBA's 40% portion of the purchase price is at a fixed rate. A couple of rules. One is your business must occupy at least 51% of the square footage. Um, the deal is underwritten by a certified development company, CDC, which is licensed, certified, and regulated by the SBA. So the SBA funds the deal, but the CDC underwrites the loan. My guest today, Jeff Serenka, is the CEO of a CDC located in Redlands, California. So let's bring him out now. Hi, Jeff. How you doing? How are you? Hey, Gene. How are you? I'm fine. So, Jeff, let's just start with the basics. Let's just make an assumption that uh, my audience doesn't know much about the SBA 504. What are the basic required documents, the timeline, and any other eligibility criteria that I did mention before? So when a borrower wants to borrow money, the 504 program from SBA allows them to buy a building, buy equipment, do tenant improvements, or build a building. So the first thing we ask them is, what do you want the money for? And if it's one of those four things, then I can do a 504 program loan for them with 10% down. Okay. What I'm going to ask them for is a either an escrow instructions or a bid for the construction of a building and then a personal financial statement from them and then the tax returns on the company that they're going to occupy the building with okay the 504 program is only for owner occupied projects okay Okay. All right. Um, you know, maybe you could do a quick overview, Jeff, of um, what are some other options that an owner could pursue if they wanted to buy a commercial building other than the SBA 504? Two of them come to mind. One is the SBA 7A program. Another is just your garden variety commercial bank mortgage with no guarantee attached to it. Right. How would how would you say the 504 stack up against those two common options? Well, the 504 is considered the best program for the acquisition or construction of real estate because it's only 10% down. And our portion of the loan, which you said in your introduction, was 40% us, 50% bank. Our 40% is at a fixed rate for 25 years. So if someone goes conventional, they're going to be putting up more money for the down payment and they will get conventional terms based on the market conditions at that time. If they're going 7A, they're tied to the prime rate going up or down on a variable rate loan. And usually the term for that 7A loan is uh, negotiated between them and the bank. 
So there are three see. options. Okay. Okay. And is the, the 7A, that's floating rate for the duration of the loan then? Yes. It's never fixed. Well, it could be fixed by some banks at some times because that's the program that they're offering to the consumer. And if they went 7A as opposed to 504, um, what have you seen in terms of what commercial banks are offering as general terms in terms of the length of the loan, the maturity or the um, between, amortization period? Between 10 and 25 years. Okay. Okay. So it depends on the bank. So it pays to shop. All yeah. right. Um, what about, what's the current rate today on an SBA 504? About six and a half percent. Wow. That's about 2% less than the prime rate at eight and a half percent. Yeah. And that six and a half percent at the time that the loan documents are signed is locked in for 25 years. Yes. That is awesome. What, um, is there a prepayment penalty attached to that, Jeff? Or what happens if rates were to go down precipitously and somebody's sitting with an SBA loan at uh, six and a half percent, now they can get it for 3%. Can they bust that contract without a hefty prepayment penalty or that's not allowed? The prepayment penalty is based on the debenture rate at the time that they took out the loan. So as an example, if the debenture rate is 3.5% at the time they took out the loan, then they are going to pay a prepayment penalty for 10 years on a sliding scale going down 10% each year. And that's based on the principal amount that they owe times the debenture rate. And the okay. first year it's 100%, second year it's 90% of that, third year it's 80% of that, going down to zero at 10 years. Okay, so to um, simplify it then, there is a prepayment penalty um, and it's, it runs for 10 years. Uh, and at the beginning of the 11th year, if they're still holding the mortgage and they want to pay it off, there is no prepayment penalty. Do I got that correct? Yes, you do. Okay. All right. And there are, some, are there some general out-of-pocket costs that are unique to SBA 504 loans? No, there's no uh, specific out-of-pocket costs other than those that the bank would charge them that they want them to pay out-of-pocket. Our program includes the costs in our loan. I see. So they can finance the out-of-pocket. Yes. Can you give us a flavor of what the out-of-pocket costs might be that a commercial bank would impose for to enter into a role, a, the, a joint deal with you? There's an SBA half point fee on the principal balance of the first that a bank will charge the borrower. Uh, there are escrow costs, title fees, uh, recording fees, et cetera, uh, document fees that the bank will charge the borrower. Uh, when we do an appraisal, when we do an environmental report, those fees are charged to the borrower either through the loan or out of pocket. Okay. Okay. All right. What's the smallest SBA 504 loan that you and a bank can do? Well, we want to do something at least 250000 For the total purchase price? Yeah. Okay. Oh, that, that opens it up a lot. I see. Okay. So um, what about, I heard a lot of, I've heard some stories on the street that the SBA has a program that if you're a little short on the 10% down payment, that the SBA or some other entity would loan you the money to finance the 10%. Is that true? And is it permissible? You can borrow money for your down payment. Yes. Can it be from any lender or can it be from you the do SBA? A seller carry back. You could do a, a, any lender. And it's, and it's permissible. Yes. We just have to include it in our cash flow analysis. Okay. All right. 
that so in essence, if, if a borrower could pull that off, then they're getting a hundred percent financing, if you will. Yes. All right. So Jeff, you've been at this for a long time. Um, can you give me a brief overview of how you view your role versus the bank's role? Um, I mean, is there any duplication or are you each doing slightly different things? Give me well, a couple of feel for that. Do, I'm sorry for interrupting you. What so we go try ahead. to do is qualify the borrower first and then have them chop the bank. Because if we qualify them first, we know what we need and we know what the bank needs and we get it all up front and then give it to the bank after we've qualified the borrower. If they go to the bank first, that bank is going to tell them yes or no after they go through all the process, and then they contact us, and then we have to go back and get all the documents again, and those that are special to SBA. So it's much easier for us to just do the loan up front qualify them, tell them what we think are the strengths and weaknesses, and then shop it to the banks that we think are going to be the most interested in doing that deal. Well, that was my next question, whether you recommend which commercial bank that you want to do this uh, joint venture deal, if you will, or is it the responsibility of the buyer to find their own bank that's going to do the 50% of the loan of the purchase price? Usually it's harder for the the borrower to find the right bank because they don't know what the banks are looking for at the time. Yes. It's easier for us because we work with all the banks to know who has an appetite for their type of deal. And then we can give it to two or three banks and let them bid on it for the borrower. Okay. That's, that's a, that's a nice feature. So, um, do you have a few success stories, Jeff, that you could, you don't have to mention the, the company name, but just one that you feel particularly proud about how presum presumably the, the applicant was renting and now they're a proud owner and how that all worked out and what you did and kind of just the best practice of your program. What, what, what happened? Well, there's two different types of best practice. One is a refi, which allows them to refi existing debt based on the appraised value of their existing building. And we've had a number of success stories with that, like La Florida, Mexico, where we refinanced three loans and got them into a much lower rate and amortized it over 25 years. So that was a great deal. On the 504 side, on a construction project, Azure Minerals, Mineral Springs and Desert Hot Springs was a motel that was just sitting there not doing much. And our borrower came in and rebuilt the whole motel into a spa. And they are a resort spa now and one of the most successful in the Coachella Valley. Interesting. I, I never thought that you could do use an SBA loan for a motel transaction, which kind of leads me into the next question. What are some, are there businesses that are no-no that the SBA and the banks will not touch by well, virtue of what they do? Any, any uh, marijuana facilities they can't touch. They can't touch any developer, non-owner occupied projects where somebody is building a shopping center and they're going to lease it out. Remember, okay. the, the operating company has to occupy at least 51% for an existing building purchase or 66% for the building of a new building. Okay. So is, is marijuana related the only type of company or industry that's, that's on the no-no list? Uh, well, basically, uh, the, the, the types of deals that we can do are restaurants, gas stations, hotels, medical offices, any retail facilities, as long as they're not of a purient, of a non-purient uh, type of business. Um, most of the time, we can approve almost any business as long 
as its owner occupied. Okay, and, so it's a really short list of no no companies. Yeah, it's a short list of things that we can't do. Okay. And the the success story that you quoted, there was three different loans. Were all of those three loans against a building? Yeah. Well, one of the nice things about the 504 is we use the asset that we're financing and we don't go after their house or other assets as in 7A, which they usually do. So if I'm building a building or buying a building for somebody, that building is the collateral for my transaction and not anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got you. Is there any other terms and conditions if you did a deeper dive that you haven't already mentioned that prospective borrowers should know about? Or do you think you pretty much have covered it so far? Well, our loans are assumable. So if they want to sell their building or well, they could sell it to another borrower who has equal or better credit and we could let them assume that loan. That's a great one. That's a And that's awesome. I didn't realize that. So it's assumable. Okay. Anything else? Um, I think that they'll find that the uh, process itself is no different than any other loan. We get the same information that a bank would get for a conventional loan. Uh, our timing is three to five days when we submit to SBA for approval. So if they have a myth that it takes a long time, it only takes time based on the borrower's ability to give us the documents we need. Okay, so, <clears throat> so I've heard that obviously a bank has a loan officer doing their underwriting for their 50% portion, that the CDC, of which you're a CEO and have been certified by the SBA, underwrites the loan. So you have your loan officer, and then you have to send your recommendation to the SBA, which presumably has a loan officer to say, yeah, we agree with you, Jeff, and your group. Let's rock and roll. Is that three separate entities that are looking at the deal? All at the same time all at the same time. And I'm assuming that they're, all, they're not always in agreement. Well, the bank is usually the easiest. The CDC second and SBA is usually a little harder depending on the circumstances. But since we've been in the business over 30 years, we don't send credit memos to SBA to approve that we don't think will be approved. Gotcha. You've got the reputation with them and you know all of the SOPs and the protocols and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, we know what they're looking for and what we have to address. That's why we'd like to pre-approve them ourselves before we go to anybody, because we will know if there are areas where we have to be concerned and we can address those up front so that they don't become a problem. The goal is to submit it and get it approved on one pass. And so that's our objective all the time. So it behooves a uh, prospective applicant to contact a CDC that has experience, um, has done a number of deals rather than a relatively new one, if you will. And by the way, how many CDCs are in the country? 270 about. Every state? Every state. Wow. Okay. So, um, California well, has the most CDCs in competition with each other. So, we are very aggressive about trying to get new business and keep our business. One of the things that we didn't mention was that CDCs are a nonprofit organization and all of our excess revenue goes back into our local community. So if they use the CDC and the Inland Empire as an example, like us, our profits and excess revenues go back into the Inland Empire. Because yeah. there are over 20 CDCs competing in the state, if they picked a CDC that a bank recommended that has headquarters in San Francisco, then all the money that the CDC makes on that deal goes to San Francisco. Right. So really important for us 
if somebody is in the Inland Empire or Southern California and wants to do a deal, that they contact us so we can keep the money local. No, that's an excellent point. Uh, that, in fact, that was going to be my next question of whether you're a nonprofit or a for-profit, but you already answered that. So, um, so in the lending world, um, you know, I have some number of years of experience. Loans of any type, so they get messed up. <laughs> they get stuck in the pipeline. Um, what are some common reasons why a 504 could get stuck in the glitch? And is there anything in your opinion that a CEO could do to prevent that? Yeah, tell them not to dis not to hide anything because it <laughs> you mean people hide stuff on the oh, application? Yes. They hope we won't notice. You mean the DUI 20 years ago? Yep. Or the or the pending years. A DUI that's pending now that they don't want to tell anybody about. So full disclosure. Full disclosure and don't be embarrassed because everybody that applies for a loan has got something somewhere. Okay. Um, I have heard that the SBA 504 program, in fact, most SBA loans, the it is the tax returns that the underwriters put more emphasis than the financial statements, be they cash or accrual, that banks normally look at. Do I got that right? Is that the SBA doesn't really put a lot of credence in financial statements and they're looking strictly at the tax returns? They are looking at the tax returns, but they are also looking at the financial statements to see if they match the tax returns. And they are very interested in the interim financial statements. So let's take an example. It's now the end of December, let's say January 1st. The business has got financial statements for the end of the year for 2023, but they haven't filed their tax returns yet. Obviously, we are going to use those financial statements to underwrite the loan. And so, yes, any time where there's a partial year, SBA wants to see the interim financial statements to see if they conform to the trends of the two years previous tax returns. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on in our economy, Jeff. Um, you know, rising interest rates, inflation, bank failures, the 2024 presidential race, issues in Washington. Um, two questions. Where do you see rates going on the 504 program? And an easy question for you, is the SBA run out of money or is there still money to fund the program? I'll take the second one first. No, they don't run out of money for what we're lending. So we can always guarantee a loan in a 504 program. There's only been a few times where that was threatened and it was always fixed. So no, they're not gonna run, run out of money. Uh, the economy, in the old days, we would look at the local markets or the regional markets and say, that's where we determine what rates are gonna be like. Today, we look at Taylor Swift and everything else. Oh, you do too, me too. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, her, her and Travis. That's it, so <laughs> when we, when we're trying to figure out where the rates are going, did she attend the football game or not? It influenced the, the rates the next day in the treasuries. Oh, most economists would not admit to that. I know that. I understand that. But we think that the rates are going to stay the same or go down for the 504 program. To go down. Okay. Over the next year. Yes. So we look at Remember, our rate is tied to the 10-year treasury. The 7A rate is tied to the prime rate. Okay, okay. So as T-bills go, so does our program. Okay. As prime rate so, goes, so does the 7A. So if we're looking at 6.5% now, um, um, you know, in your opinion, they won't rise above 65 They might come down less than 65 Yes, I think they're going to go down during the year. Well, and how do you beat that? Let's just say it goes down to six, a 6% 6 mortgage to buy a building with only 10% down payment 
And 40% of that purchase price, which is the SBA's portion, is fixed for the next 25 years. You can't beat it. That's why the 504 program is the best program to buy or build real estate for owner-occupied companies. I agree with you, and this is not a paid political announcement. Um, now, now we say one other thing that, that'll be a little sensitive, but I can say it because I've been around a while. Seven A's are tied to a variable rate because a bank is able to increase the rate as the market goes. Yes, yes. And so when they do that 7A loan, they sell it in the secondary market. Yes. It's a premium for selling that loan. If yeah. the borrower goes to a bank and says, I would like to do a loan to buy or build real estate, it is possible that the bank may not tell them about the 504 loan they will tell them about the 7A because they make more money on the 7A. Yes, yes, now, yes. not an yes. indictment on them. They are a for-profit business. No, I understand. But, I understand. But to get them to understand the 504 program sometimes isn't as easy. So that's why we recommend they come to us first, and then we can qualify them and show them what our opportunity cost would be Compared to a seven A, well, um, you know, I um, I've had many clients that are seeking finance for expansion, and we we talk about all the debts, and this is, and they'll tell me, oh yeah, I have a mortgage on the building. Oh, okay, what kind is it? Seven A, and I look at them and I go, oh my god, a variable rate loan. They have interest rate exposure. Um, and as you know, in many cases with a 7A loan, not with a 504, is that they will require additional collateral, which is code for maybe a deed of trust on the owner's house. Right. And that's why our program has a big advantage, because we use the asset that we're financing as the collateral. So the message to my audience is that you need to shop. You need to be cognizant of all of the various loan options and just don't sign up quickly without some due diligence just because someone says, this is a great deal for you. Verify it. Yeah. And if they talk to us first, we will be able to help them through the process. And if the 504 program doesn't work for them, we'll be glad to help them get a different type of product. That's the way it should be. So, so Jeff, um, what are some resources or websites that a CEO could tap into for future guidance or support about the program that you could recommend? EFC504.com. Okay. That's our website. We have all the information on the program there. All right. Um, I'll put that in the show notes so people can remember that. Um, now, so you've alluded to the fact that the SBA has a prepayment penalty for the first 10 years. First 10 years, yes. I'm presuming, do banks have prepayment penalties on, the, yes, on their they, first? Yes, they vary. They're, they're based on the prime uh, and, the, and the deal that they've struck, and they're usually uh, from three to five years because their loans are usually fixed for up to 10 years, so they have a shorter term. And so a borrower will have to refinance that loan sooner. So their prepayment penalty is lower, but on a bank, you typically can prepay uh, on a yearly basis, a certain percentage of the principal balance. Okay. With a 504 loan, your prepayment is based on the entire principal balance. You have to pay off the entire loan to prepay. Most well, of might... the 504 <clears throat> borrowers don't get into the 504 program for a short-term loan. Right. Well, my point being is that with a commercial bank, um, that they are not going to give 25-year fixed-rate loans like the SBA is. Right. They may do, uh, and I guess it's all negotiable. I know it's negotiable, whether it's floating or fixed. 
if it's fixed, most banks, if you're lucky, might give you a five-year maturity or a 10-year maturity with a 15 to 20-year amortization. But my message to my audience is you need to shop the terms and conditions of the bank because that's that's part of the deal. You're going to be making two loan payments, one to the bank and one to the SBA. And you want to make sure that your bank loan is the best that it can be that you deserve. So just don't leap at something without reading the fine print. Yes, and that's uh, very common for people to get uh, in a quandary because let's say they go to their local bank and their local bank tells them, well, uh, give me all this stuff. And then three months later, they say, well, I'm not sure if I want to do this deal. And the borrower was in escrow and they had a 60 day financing contingency. And now they are 90 days and they've had to get an extension and maybe put cash in and they still don't have a loan. And now they got to start all over with another bank. And that's one of the reasons why we shop it for them before they start the process. Because we know that once they open escrow, they've only got so much time to close that escrow and to satisfy that financing contingency. And we don't want to put them in a position to start with a bank and then have the bank turn them down and then they have to go find another bank. Right. Well, yeah, for any business owner that's growing, a, a critical decision is, do I lease or buy? And uh, it's not something, it's, that decision is not something that you should uh, hurry through. But clearly to me, based on my experience, the 504 loan program is the best in the market. Uh, and it's just a matter of which CDC they work with, what city they live in, which bank they pick. Um, as we're getting close to running out of time, Jeff, is there any, uh, could you give me like maybe three key takeaways from our talk today that you want to make sure that the borrowers understand um, about the 504 program and your sure. role as and your role as a CDC, sort of a wrap up comments. Sure. The first thing is that we find the lender for them and pre underwrite them so that they don't have to worry about something happening that they didn't expect. That's a big one. Second is that we are a fixed rate program. So they don't have to worry about the rates going up or down during the term of their loan with us. That's and a huge third, one. <laughs> and the third is that our rate is tied to the treasury, not the prime. And that's an advantage to the borrower normally. Okay, very good. Well, Jeff, um, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, again, without repeating myself, this is a really critical decision because owners that can uh, get approval are now building equity in a, in a physical asset as opposed to renting something where there's no ownership. And there could be legacy issues down the road. It could be estate planning issues that now they own this asset. And if they say sometime down the road, 20 years, 25 years, they want to sell their business, they don't have to sell the building. Nope. And they can keep that for yes. a form of residual income. So yes. I thank you so much, Jeff. You're very welcome. And um, hopefully we'll see each other soon. Okay. Thank you, Gene. Happy holidays to you and all the people who are going to be listening to this podcast. Same to you, Jeff. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. You're welcome. Bye-bye. At this time, I'd like to thank my sponsors, the Small Business Development Corporation of Orange County and the IE, Desmond and Lewis, a full-service marketing company. Uh, if you like the show, leave us a good review, whether you access the show via your favorite podcast or YouTube. Um, and thanks for listening. Tell a friend, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Bye-bye. This has been CEO to Rainmaker with Gene Valdez. To find out more, like us on Facebook, LinkedIn, and follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. If you have questions, email the show. Find that link and others in the show notes. Thanks for listening and join us again next time.